Today I'm going to be showing you how you can turn this into this for free and super easily. So what are we going to be using for this effect? Photoshop? No, that costs tons of money. GIMP? Well, we could, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be using a program called Polar. So you can just go to their website right here. It's available for a ton of devices, iOS, Android, web browser, Mac, Windows. Today I'm just going to be using it on Mac though, so you can click here. It's a great free editor. It's super basic, but also very powerful. You can buy it for $20, but there's no need for that. So I'm just going to be using the free version today. Once you have it downloaded in whatever software you use, you can just open it up. So for example here, I'm just going to be using this picture from Yosemite. So I'm just going to bring it in. And when you bring it in, you can see that there are a few settings on the right hand side. So the first thing I do, which seems wrong to some degree, is the auto color. It definitely doesn't give a final result, but it's a good place to start for a fast edit. So once I've autoed the color, I like to go into the color adjustments. Temperature, you can adjust it. Warmer usually gives a more cinematic look and I kind of feel like that for this shot with all the reflections and everything there. The next tab down you can go to is the light. Dehaze is nice, it kind of adds a more contrasty look to your image, as well as exposure obviously, you can just brighten the shot, make that look nicer. You can change the clarity of the shot. I usually leave this for a shot around here, around 40, and then sharpen. This shot's already pretty sharp, so I'm just gonna leave that at zero. If you wanna pay for it, you can also get denoise, but you don't need it. Vignette is nice, it allows you to have a white or black vignette on your shot. I like adding it a little bit to about negative 10 and somewhere in there. You can also feather it out more. The curves are nice for overall coloring your shot. You can add some more lightness and darkness into your shot here. More contrasty look, liking the way that looks here. If I want to add some more reds, like in the rock here, I can bring that up in the highlights and that'll change that up there, but I don't want very much. I'm just gonna bring a little bit. And with the blues also, I'm going to bring those up a little bit there as well. If you right click on the shot, you can also see the before and after. So here, as you can see, there's a lot of difference already being made. If you go down to the next page, you can add masks. If I wanna add a radial mask right here, for example, and I want to pull out a little bit of brightness in the bottom here, I can bring it here, extend that a little bit here. A lot of the features are locked, but the most important ones are still available. So what I like to do is just raise the exposure and you can actually invert it so it focuses more on that one area, change the exposure around and create a nice looking shot. But I don't need a mask here, so I'm just gonna delete that. But as you can see, this before and after clearly sharpens the shot, gives it more cinematic feel more professional feel as well as a great looking picture. Okay, so just for example, I have another shot here that I'm gonna bring in. So just drag it into your project, it'll open up. The other one will just stay there, saved. So this, as you can see, is a pretty nice shot. Everything looks good, but of course it can be enhanced better. So first, auto enhance, makes everything pop a little bit more. This shot is pretty dramatic, and so there's some things that I wanna do to make it seem more dramatic. So what I'm gonna do is go up to the color and bump the saturation. But the blues in the back are getting a little bit too much, so I'm gonna raise the temperature just a little bit here. And as you can see, that is wrecking the color of the ocean. It's turning completely brown and disgusting. You really want some good clarity up there. Sharpening isn't gonna really help this shot, so I'm just gonna leave that down at zero. Vignette, don't really need that. Okay, so this shot is a good place where you can use the hue, saturation, and luminance. So what you can do is pick these different colors and change the hue, saturation, and luminance within each color type. So what I wanna do here is change the ocean to a bit more bluish color. And so right now it's kind of under an orange tone. So if I lower the saturation, you can see it kind of gets rid of that, that brownness in the ocean. And if I add hue, it turns green. Wow, how weird. So if you're going for a stylistic shot, you can do that as well but I don't want that right now. I can make it red, something cool in there. If I change it to yellow, I can do the same thing with that tone of color. So you can see before and after, the image is definitely looking better. So another thing you can do here is with toning. And so these colors here are dark. So I'm gonna go into the shadows. I can choose the same color here. I can change how the shadows look. You can make it super stylistic, all of these colors, pretty awesome effects for a free software. But I do want the shadows that bluish tone, so I'm not gonna go that extreme. Down here at the bottom is no effects, so I'm just gonna drag the shadows up a little bit in the blues. So now the ocean is looking more ocean-like. 
So in just a few minutes, I was able to make the shot that I thought looked good turn into something that actually looks good. If you want to download this software, I'll leave a link in the notes below. Anyway, that's it for today. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.